Hello traders. Uh, today I'd like to talk about process. Um, so to start, what is process? Well, I like to relate it to the scientific method. Um, does it make sense to me? That kind of got hammered into my head in, the, in college, so I found this pretty cool, easy to use flowchart online. Um, make it solar.com. Anyway, so as you can see, the scientific method, you choose your topic or whatever observation, and then you identify the problem, you research it, develop hypotheses, design the experiment, test it, analyze the result, form it, formulate conclusions, and then identify the problem again. The point is, is this thing goes full circle. Everything is a feedback. Every step affects the next step. This is process. It's important to do this because it'll help you become a better trader. If you can, for instance, like your topic is obviously trading, right? The problem is that you want to make money trading. So how are you going to do that? So you research it. That's what you're doing right now if you're watching this video. Um, and then you develop a hypothesis. You're like, oh, this chart pattern um, shows that price will reverse. So you design the experiment. What does that mean? You find an entry. And you enter. You test it. See if it works. Analyze the result. Did you win the trade or did you lose it? You formulate your conclusions. What happened? You know, why did this trade go right or why did this trade go wrong? Then you start the problem all over again. Given, say right here, maybe you entered too early or the wrong time of the day, or there was a news report coming out and you missed that. And so the next time you trade using that same method, then you have uh, more information on your side, and you're able to make better decisions. Well, this is kind of what how I look at it from a trading standpoint. I guess I could have put little arrows between here and here and here and here. Oops. I'm just going to leave that little one. It's kind of funny. So, but as you can see, you track your trade. So whatever pairs you're tracking. Um, currently, I track, you know, all the majors and minors and some of the crosses. Then you qualify it. I usually qualify by finding the PTS chart pattern, which I showed you in the patterns um, video. And then I secondary, the secondary way to qualify this is to use overlays, which we talked about overlays every, like I've talked about it in almost every video, you know. An overlay is just simply a way of verifying the trade. Um, so, if you're using chart patterns, maybe you want to verify with Fibonacci levels, or support and resistance levels, or time rhythm, or you know a wave theory, or something like that. Fifty percent rule, you know, anything that is going to further qualify your trade. Next thing I do is I go do top-down analysis. So if I'm on the hour chart, I look down to 15 minutes for entry and make sure that 15 minutes uh, verifies my trade. Also, I look up. I look up to the four hour and see uh, where it lies in the grander scheme of things. The next step is the entry. So I usually use a stochastic oscillator because typically I use reversal formations and they, they're kind of ranging in that standpoint. So they're pretty effective for me. Next thing I have to do is I monitor my trade. Um, that means if, let's say that I had a simple two to one stop uh, SL ratio or risk reward ratio, excuse me, and I was looking to make 40 pips, and so I had a 20 pip stop loss. A lot of times, once I have got the initial 40, I'll take half my entry out and raise my stop loss to break even, and let the rest ride. Sometimes with a trailing stop, sometimes not. Um, exit is obviously after all your losses are taken out. And then finally you evaluate. Um, evaluation is like I said, maybe you timed it wrong. Maybe there's a news report. Then you take that information and plug it right back into the beginning and tracking. And it just runs full circle, just like that. And so what happens is your, your trading system slowly evolves and you get better and better at trading. And 
more refined and the mistakes that you made before you're not making so much. And the important part of doing this is you have to write everything down. I have a written notebook where I write down my trade, what I used to qualify the trade, if it was a PTS pattern or something else, what I used for an overlay, Fibonacci levels, or I used time, or I used um, other Goodman things that we haven't talked about. And then I go you know, what what time I entered the trade, what my stop loss was at, what my take profit projection was at, and whether I won or lost. And then also I write down my emotions and stuff like that. And then I go back and I look at all these things and get like a significant data set. So like at least ten. So if the, you have to have ten of the same thing. So you have to have so if you used a, a chart pattern and Fibonacci level and you're using a four hour and one hour level, you have to have ten of those. Ten of those types of trades, and that's a significant data set. And then you can go back and look at them and see which ones are winners and which ones are losers and see if you can find a pattern between the winners and a pattern between the losers. Okay, now we have a brief overview of what that is. Let's look at it from a real world standpoint. I'll give you a trade that I had um, a few weeks ago. This is a PTS formation. A one, two, three becomes a one, two, and I'm looking to sell the three. So the first thing that I did was once I did this, it was like this is green box represents a landing zone. The purple is where the PTS lies. So I'm looking for entry within the green box somewhere. That's time. My analysis of time. It's good. And uh, we kind of went into analysis of time. This is a little more complex version of it. But if you haven't seen some time analysis, go back and watch that video. The next thing I did was go up to the four hour and see where it lies. So obviously what I would do when I do this is I just look at the Fibonacci level, see where it lies. Now I have mine not at 60% right now because I was looking at something else, but it's right about the 50% mark. If you look at the close of the candle and not the, the shadow, or the bar, rather. Between 50 and 62. So it's a pretty basic level of support, or resistance rather. Because you had this big down move and then up move. Also, another thing I look at is this flat complex rule. This is pretty much a flat um, line or swing, price swing, and this is complex, followed by a flat down move. That's another Goodman overlay that I use sometimes. But now, next thing is for top down is I would go. I don't know why that went all the way back down there. To my 15 minute chart, and I would look for a proper entry. Let me get rid of this fib real quick. So usually when I go down, I look for candlesticks. As you can see right there, I entered right there where there's some tweezer tops. And also, I look for this cross on my stochastic oscillator when they oversold position or overbought position. That's my analysis. And then I marked all those things down. I marked the time of day. And I went back and seen if there's anything I could have done better. No, I probably should have waited on this to be more precise. See this top? I should I used to be safer. I should have waited for it to break the top. Is um, because it broke this. You know, this is pretty significant high. Make sure the price wasn't going to trace any higher. But it didn't, and I got, you know, a pretty good trade out of the deal. Uh, so that's about it for process. Hope you enjoyed. Good.